Okay, title. Oh, we're going in the La Seraphim restaurant. Yo. They got a FPV drone pilot, baby. Let's go. If you don't know, FPV drones are like VR drones. <laughs> where you wear goggles and you literally see what the drone sees and it allows the drone pilot to fly like crazy close to stuff and get insane shots like this. Oh, you just gotta, just gotta tilt it a little bit. I bet you they were running out of time on set. You didn't get the shot perfect. It's a little off center, it's a little tilted and they could have tried to fix it in post but I think no matter what, the shot on set just wasn't quite good enough. They were like, you know, forget it. Oh, you don't do that in a restaurant normally. <laughs> you don't just, you know, just stand up on a table and start dancing. First of all, did you hear the producing? It's produced by Nile Rodgers, who made songs like this. kind of a bop. If you listen, there's a little and that is the start of one of the most famous soundtracks ever from the good, the bad, and the ugly. So you hear that little flute sound? I love this song. He actually sampled that flute and then pitched it down and it's like a and that is why we see so many cowboy hats, leather, gloves, tassels. It's very heavily influenced by Westerns. And we're gonna get into the meaning of the song later, but I love how right off the bat, they're setting the tone. They're saying, we're unforgiven. We're going to literally stand up in a restaurant and start dancing. A fancy restaurant at that, like who the frick does that? <laughs> Imagine like you just see this, you're just like eating, and you're just like, oh man, dude, this Alfredo is fine. Bruh, why are you guys there? Do you see this? <laughs> Take a look at this transition, editors. So they do a little tilt down transition. It's seemingly very simple, you know, you just tilt down and then you tilt down the next shot, super easy. But here's a little tip. They actually added a white sheet of paper as we tilt down right here in the original A shot and then cut to the B shot. So it makes the cut way smoother just by having that sheet of paper on the A shot. That match cut is so good, bro. G is on a longer lens, walking towards the camera, just strutting, you know, just, I am all that, because she is. And then we do a gorgeous match cut. We're right here in this shot, cut to the next shot, and then zoom out into a super wide angle lens to reveal the girls just going in on the helicopter pad. They're just like, but the fact that they actually used a match cut combined with a zoom lens to reveal the girls dancing is absolutely incredible. Ooh. Just the door closing, super simple. Oh. Whoa, I just got a haircut. And that really makes me want to tell you about the number one music site that I used all throughout my editing career. I've used it in this film, in this music video, in this piece. Want to know what it's called? Artlist. Hold on one sec, wait. Artlist allows you to have unlimited downloads of over 100,000 assets, all royalty free to use in any content you want. And I've even used it in this little doc with Kylie Jenner. If we reveal a project, we have Faya Bandem. Now you can find everything under Artlist, including footage, so I don't have to do this. I use Artlist footage all the time, like in my last video, getting some star footage, and in my course, the editing formula. 
we actually took artless footage and turned it into a Nike commercial. It looks so professional. I would know the difference because I've actually, you know, edited real ones. And yes, in those I've also used Artlist. Artlist is trusted by giant brands that I've done work for like Nike, Google, and more. And the best part is you can start for free. And once you're hooked, they got all kinds of plans to help you save money on your unique needs. I like them because they make searching for what I need super easy and quick. I can stay in my flow state with advanced searching capabilities and hand-picked themed collections. Access a catalog of creative assets perfect for everything that you might need from YouTube videos to movies. Music from every genre. Genre. Footage for every scene. Templates for every video. So there you have it. That's some of the secret sauce from my own work. And you can get started for free with just a name, email, and password. No credit card required. We got a special deal where you get two extra months for free if you hit the link below. Back to old Jordan. <laughs> This shot reminds me of Billie Eilish's All the Good Girls Go to Hell. So she literally got tarred and feathered. Her angel wings turned into bat wings. It's a very light and uplifting song. It's, it's lovely for everybody. It's a family friendly film. <laughs> Like she was so happy to throw the cake. She's like, all right, you get to throw the cake at the camera now. She's like, yes. yes. I like the horse on the but I ride lyric. It's nice. The big question for this music video is what the frick are they talking about when they say Unforgiven? So there's a teaser trailer that I think is gonna really help us answer that question. So we have a glowing heart. Wow, the cinematography is gorgeous. So they said either give up or give in. What are they talking about? My hunch is that they're talking about being a K-pop group and creativity in general. And boy, let me tell you, we're gonna dive into this at the end of the episode. You don't wanna miss it. What the frick? <laughs> that was one of the longest breaks I've seen in a K-pop song in a long while. And I'm gonna be honest, that made me extremely uncomfortable, that whole sequence. I didn't like it. And the biggest reason is primarily the lack of sound. The whole thing was super silent, except for a few key sound effects. And when you hear only certain things, it draws your attention to them. When we hear just her footsteps, when she's in the middle of a city with fire going on, and there probably should be wind, there should be all kinds of sounds that we're hearing that we're just not hearing. And so I literally was looking at her shoes, like, why are we just hearing footsteps? Is that important for some reason? And then that sound when she takes off the wing bro is like, still gives me the willies. I literally don't want to play it again. I don't like that. Not in my house. Uh-uh. If I was editing this, I would have absolutely put all kinds of sound in there so the world would be brought to life. But maybe there was a creative choice that I don't understand. And that shot was a little bit jarring because I couldn't tell where we were in space. It was like too close on her hand. The song is hard though. Ooh! <laughs> Dude, look at the people in the back. <laughs> Especially this one lady. <laughs> She's like, wow, guys, there's a K-pop group in, my, in the restaurant. It's right. I was wondering when I saw them walk in if they were going to perform. <laughs> Post that on the ground. <laughs> I am so embarrassing. <laughs> this chorus is, is dope. Ooh. Oh. 
Wow. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. My allergies are really bad right now. But we freaking love a camera attached to the end of the sword. Like, come on, we love it. And I felt like there was a zoom right here, but she really just went like this and pulled the sword closer to her face. Oh, the eyebrow? <laughs> what is happening? I gotta talk about this scene first. I'm sorry. We did have a little bit of a filmmaking issue here where the 180 degree rule was broken. The 180 degree rule is if you draw a line, the camera should stay on one side of the line when you're filming a scene. We have a shot right here, which is kind of right on the line. And then we cut to the right of the line. But we do have an issue here when we cut to this guy, he's looking left to right and the camera is on the left side of the line. So this shot of the guy is actually wrong. And we had the same issue on the bow and arrow shot where we were on one side of the bow and arrow and then for the close up, we cut to the other side. Now it's not the most important rule ever to adhere to, but it does make it a little bit jarring when you're just watching it and the line gets crossed. This part of the song is so hard. Oh. oh, what is happening? The editor did a great job with this match cut because the framing doesn't match that well. But they decided to add a zoom between the shots, which actually created consistent camera movement, which made it match better. And then this pole starts leaning down, which I have no idea what this pole is. But we cut to another shot of her leaning down towards the camera, which then creates another match cut. Wow. You should freaking subscribe. That's all. Dude, look at the cheats crawling along the wall. It's almost like she has angel wings, but then doesn't. They just pulled their Hummer up in the middle of the street and they're like, it's dance therapy time. Let's go. <laughs> they're like, what the frick? And then somehow they're all of a sudden just on the top of the car. Watch this. Dude, they're getting after it. Yes. Another hidden cut. One of my biggest tips is to cut on action because it helps blend shots together really well and make them feel smooth. So they do this right here where she lifts her head up and then we match cut. It's not even a great match cut. It's like just similar framing, but the camera move that follows makes it feel incredible. It makes this shot and the next shot literally feel like one shot. It's so good. There's another hidden cut. This is actually two shots, but they decided to flutter cut them together and have people just spawn behind her walking. That is so cool. This kind of reminds me of I Wanna Rock by Lil Uzi Vert, where they were just partying on top of cars in the middle of the city using like VHS cam footage and just whipping it around. It was directed by Gibson Hazard. It was also in my best edited music videos of 2022. This section right here reminds me of it. I love some shaky cam footage. It's so good. Having busyness or fast cuts or shaky footage on fills of songs, 90% of the time is gonna work super duper well. So here's the fill of the song before the next phrase. One, two, fill. And that's where we have all that chaos. 
in the teaser trailer they say that I can go forward but only within the limit. But their answer is, I wish for what is forbidden to me. Ramps? That top rotating shot. The girls are going to be breaking all of the rules. They're gonna be standing up on tables. They're gonna be stopping traffic. They're gonna be blowing stuff up with bows and arrows. And I think it's a metaphor for their creative philosophy. In an interview with Teen Vogue, Yunjin says, whatever choice you make, I think there's always judgment that follows. And so you may as well just be original. And that's what it means to be unforgiven. If you've been thinking about getting the editing formula, now is the time. It is 30% off. I personally teach you exactly step-by-step -step how I've edited for Justin Bieber, Mr. Beast, and give you your own music video and commercial to edit. It's a ton of fun. Hit the link to check it out. Jesus loves you. I love you guys. Peace.